Mike Gould here, Mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth. Here's our new resident boot camp, Dill. She's a wonderful girl. We start very simply. Number one, we always have to have a way of controlling a dog's behavior. So dogs, all dogs, like humans, we're either safe and secure or not. Meaning, if the floor starts to rumble right now, I'm going to think it's an earthquake, I'm going to be nervous. If something blows up, we're not going to be safe and secure. Dogs, unfortunately, with their little mammal brain, they orient themselves to sound and movement, sound and movement and odor. So they use all their senses in a different way. As soon as that changes by noise or movement, some dogs get out of balance. So we always want to keep a dog in balance. What's balance? Balance is happy, safe, and secure. So with Dill, we, we, we start by A, changing the equipment. So we're going to put this new collar on. It slips right over our head. Beautiful. It stays on there. We always, so we're taking this piece of rope and putting a more secure uh, leash on. We can even thin this up a little bit. This kind of heavy. So we take this off. So she's either safe and secure under our supervision. One of her big problems is a version of what we call leash aggression. Or she barks, neurotic barking. So all dogs are supposed to bark. That's how they alert us to things. That's called alarm barking, meaning they hear a noise. Woof, woof. We look out the window, we see it's the mailman, we say thank you, Dill, for letting us know. The, then alarm barking, if it's not addressed, turns into neurotic barking. And all humans are uh, participate in, in creating drama. We just do it, we don't realize it. So we have to keep a dog balanced, like we want to keep ourselves balanced, right? We never want to be like this or like this. We want balance, and that's what I want with Dill. So, leash and collar is always on, we praise good behavior, and we correct bad behavior. In her case, bad behavior is going to be pulling on the leash and barking inappropriately. So this is the door to our house. She got a little nervous. What did I do? I just get low, watch how I rehabilitate the fear. She came to me, I love her. Leash and collar has to be on. At the conclusion of this is the beginning. This is second or third grade. Good girl, Dill. Good girl, Dill. Good girl, Dill. Eh, eh. Good girl. Setting boundaries and structure. We love our pets, but they need us to psychologically think for them because they can't. So we're going to cut, we're going to go outside, and we're going to teach the first behavior, which is walk on our left side without putting tension on the leash. It's got to be down here. Good girl. So, the first behavior, we teach the dog to walk on our left side, that's called healing, without pulling on the leash. So our body has to be relaxed, we love good behavior, and we correct bad behavior. So dogs that run a little on the scared, insecure side, they need leadership more than a dog that's confident. So a dog that's yapping and barking at everything that moves means they're trying to scare them away. It's a sign of anxiety, anxiety. So we take the anxiety away, by dealing with everything. When she put, when she needs to walk on her left, good girl, I praise her. I turn, she turns. You have to use the right equipment. Without this leash and collar, this would not work. Good girl. So we're giving her something to do. Um, and that's what she has to do is when the pack is moving, she needs to be on the left side. Obviously, one dog is one dog. When you have multiple dogs, this makes this matter more difficult. Good girl. Relax. There's no pressure here. There's none of this. I turn. It's like if we were training a guide dog. She can go slow if I have a disability. I can go fast. When I stop, I'm going to ask her to sit. It looks like this. Dill, sit. Sit. A little correction. Sit. Still sit. Good girl! And I praise her. We got to work through this, that this is automatic. She has no clue. I'm talking human to the human, animal to animal. So I'm bilingual. Here's the praise. See how my body's relaxed? When I step out with my left, we're going to move. And that's our good training for today. Okay, so moving along, we're keeping it simple, simple, simple. Less talk, 
my body language. I'm looking at the camera. I'm not bending over. I'm not touching. I'm not petting. I got to be the leader. When the pack moves, if you watch a pack of animals or a flock of birds, they all take their position in the flock, the uh, pack, the school of fish. It's not a thought out process. They don't pre-plan it. Things move, they fall into place. She's doing beautifully. We're adding to, so really what we do is introduce triggers and, and pressure, psychological pressure, because we live in a world of pressure. So when the car is moving, everything's moving around us. So she brought, rah, 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 rah. and then the tr light turns green and the world changes in an instant. The doorbell rings, she goes ballistic, that, that ends. Then she goes back to being safe and secure. So we gotta think for her. What? Left foot. You're gonna hold this leash with this in your right hand. You're gonna be like this, relaxed. Left foot is gonna be the signal to walk. It looks like this. No talking. I'm standing up straight. I can tell her she's a good girl. I turn. She does a left. Uh, and this is how we go. Good girl. When I stop, I slow down my pace. That's gonna be her signal to SIT. Good girl. See, my hands are relaxed here. My hands fall where they naturally would be. If my hands are always up at like this, the dog is going to use, be used to that picture of your hands. So what we have to do, she has to, we have to be consistent, and then she has to adapt to our consistency. Whether I walk slow, fast, or I hop on one leg, she will adapt to that, providing we're consistent. So now, after we, we always take care of the dog's physical and psychological needs. Now she's on free time. So 90% of her life is on free time. The only thing she can't do when she's on free time is bark at things. So we don't want her to bark. So now she looks beautiful, she's confident, she's not up my butt, and she's gonna start sniffing, and she has the opportunity to pee and poop. So she can be out here all day if all I care. But I have to be supervising her. The things I don't want her to do, is uh, bark right now or act, I don't know, this is perfectly balanced. And if she pees and poops, that's even a benefit. Then I know what time it is. If we keep our feeding consistent, and I know it's two o'clock in the afternoon and she has a bowel movement, I know that if everything stays the same, tomorrow she's gotta be out around 1.30 or two to have a bowel movement, roughly. You control what goes in, then we can predict what, what and when it's gonna come out. This is wonderful. Good girl. Good girl, Dill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, girl. Leash and collar's always on. Does she look oppressed? Does she look like she's been beaten? Of course not. And this is just early stages. Good girl, Dill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dill, Dill, Dill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a little on the cautious side. That's how dogs survive. That's how humans survive. Good girl, baby. I get low, she comes to me, I love her. This is the balance I'm talking about. It's not oppression. It's not strength. It's not yelling. No talking. Excellent. Hey, So now what we've simply done is transfer. So as I said, all behavior, negative, bad behavior has to be corrected with a, a, just a snap and release of this leash and good behavior is rewarded by love. So here now, I don't need Ashley. I'm pulling up to a red light. Uh, I have the leash in my hand. So, and again, we're early on. We're not even halfway through this process. So things are good. Now here's a man. You don't have to take your eyes off the dog. I'll do everything. Do you know which way it is to Riverhead, sir? What? I'm sorry, Riverhead. Make He's... a right? Okay, thank you very much. It would be... Se Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's going to be 72 or 73, depending on where you're going in Riverhead. I think it is 72. I just didn't know which way. Thank you, sir. So this is, this is what we do. We expose the dogs to triggers. 
we set him up, but he did fine. So I didn't, it's just energy, balance of energy. That was wonderful. So this is the car, and if we stay consistency is the trick. Of course, what's gonna happen when we have multiple dogs, the second dog is gonna create the drama. So unfortunately, all dogs have to be balanced. All energy has to be balanced. Let's cut and get some more dogs. So continuing with our car training, I always have to be in the way of controlling dog's behavior. So Dill is very nicely looking out the window, and there's another dog there. A dog that he, he's really not familiar with, and we're going to take, and then there'll be another dog. So all these things are relaxed, relaxed. Like just, it's not about tension and it's not about talking. All right, you can go ahead, try to get her in the back of the car. So here we are. We're introducing. So Dill now is being pet by a very lovely lady out here. And that's good energy. We threw another dog in the back, and we're gonna go for another but ride in the car. Thank you, honey. You helped us out. Oh yeah, the way I look right. So here we are. So now we added more anxiety, right? More not even anxiety, but there's more, uh, the dynamic has changed just by inviting another dog in the car. So now, and there's dogs outside. So remember, when we're in a car. The world is always moving. It's like the Wizard of Oz when the house blows away. The whole world is moving. Dogs don't understand this concept. There are not cars in the wild. So we have to teach the domestic dog, a domestic dog that lives in the human world, what cars are, what trains are, what planes are, what wheelchairs are, what bicycles are. Anything that moves has to be taught. So we do it slowly. Notice we have the leash and collar on. Ashley's back there, and we're gonna move. <laughs> now somebody barked, that was Dill. Dill got corrected, great. I'm trying, finally trying to get her to do something. So a lot of times with us, because we have such good leadership and structure, it's hard to get the dog to do anything. So as we move, we have, uh, we're going for a ride. What happens when we get to a trail? Oh good, here's some men. Watch what happens. I'm going to pull up to some workers. I'm going to ask them a question. And Ashley is either going to correct good, bad, correct bad behavior or praise good behavior. That's it. There's no yelling. There's no... Good. There's no screaming. That's good. And the obvious problem is the other dog present... Hi, guys. Hi, dog. Good. The other dog present is really triggering Dill's behavior. So we learned that by having the second dog and vice versa. So that was wonderful. And the weird thing or the odd thing about dog training is we want to promote the bad behavior. So I don't want the dogs to be good. I want them to uh, demonstrate the behaviors that, tr that, that are triggered by things. So now Dill was great until we had the second dog. So we had to correct. You couldn't correct unless we had a leash and collar on. So we don't wait to fix these, these things when we're taking our trip to, uh, you know, Disney World. You do this just in your driveway. I'm just driving around the neighborhood looking for stimulation. And stimulation is going to be humans. So off we go and the world is moving around us, moving around us. And everybody's relaxed. Our two boot camp dogs are like two peas in a pod. And unfortunately, this, or fortunately, this is what we do. We find triggers, triggers. I'm looking, I gotta go into the belly of the beast. I see triggers, I'm going to the train station. Notice nobody's talking to the dogs. I'm the only big mouth here is me. Good. And then Bill is hopefully gonna see some strange looking people because there's plenty of them here at the railroad. Is this the Ronkonkoma station? Yes. Ronkonkoma, thank you. I knew that, but you know, I can't be walk filming, I look like a weirdo, Jackie and I. So here we are, people, places, and things, movement. Dogs, remember, orient themselves to movement. Whether it's a squirrel, a landscaper, a bicycle, a skateboard, a train, or a car. So they, what is, a car to the dogs is just another creature that they try to catch. They're predators, right? So they chase things. That's how they survive. They're pre, they're wired to chase and kill things, things that are moving away from them. All right, so this is good. Let me just see if I can find some more people, more things, and this is great. Great. And if the one dog puts his head out too much, we'll correct a little bit. Because we got to teach him. 
We'll teach them not to put their paws on the window. So I've had dogs that, watch when I move the windows up and down. I've had dogs start biting the windows because they think that's an animal. Anything that moves is odd. They, do you think a dog could possibly understand the uh, electric windows? They don't, they just see movement. You think they can understand a vacuum cleaner? Of course not, they just hear movement. So I've had dogs that literally would bite the windows when they came up and down because All right, we're going back to the barn. That was great. I got to make a U-turn here. So remember, everything has to be done with a leash and collar on. For now on, until these behaviors in, I don't know when, two months, three months, four months, I don't know. When does a child learn to tie their shoes and put their pants on? I don't know how long that takes. But once it becomes a habit, that's when. So we open our car. And what, who do we find? We find Ashley, who else? Uh, Dill, Charlotte. and Charlie. And they're relaxed, and Ashley's relaxed. So then, uh, I'm gonna take the leashes. So this car, this car is no different than the crate. <laughs> so look, it's relaxed. They can't act on their own impulses. If they act on their own instincts, they'd chase a car, a ball, a toy, or food, and they'd be hurt. So it's important that they, de they defer to us. So Charlotte's hyper. She's cool. She's wonderful. But that energy has to be channeled. It just cannot be 24-7. So she plays all day, but she can't play all when she wants to. So I'm going to let them out. Come on, guys. And then uh, Ashley's going to take Dale, I'm going to take uh, Charlotte, and we're going to go for a walk. When Charlotte pulls, what? We've got to be in direction. That's that. We move, we relax. No tension. You know, right? When we stop, we're going to ask the dogs to sit. We're relaxed. Drop your leash. I don't want you to drop your leash, but I'm just demonstrating the fact that if you do this consistently, the dog's not even going to know if you drop the leash. Uh, uh, sit. I ask you to sit. Correct? Good. We're going to ask the dogs to stay. Sit. And step out with our right foot. Then we're going to come back to their side and love them. Love, love. No food. Leash and collar. Not just a leash and collar. This leash and collar. We step out with our left foot. The dogs walk. And it doesn't matter what's going on. We turn. The dog has to turn. Remember, we're only halfway through this. So this is a process. So we go fast. Normal. We come to a stop. We step out with our right. This is what we do. So we're do heel, sit, stay. These are just things. The car is like a doghouse. Everything is controlled by us in a relaxed way. No tension. If the dog gets up, Ashley just reached down. This is a process. We can't take a screwdriver and adjust the dog. It's not a carburetor. Sit. She's got to learn. Well, Charlotte's impatient. Charlotte wants to chase leaves. She wants to chase cars, blah, blah, blah. Dill has a different set of issues. He gets nervous when movement inside of a car, when people come to the house. Good for today.